Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Thanks so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. Now, I'm not going to go through my usual introduction today because I just wanted to jump, jump straight into battery day. I'm already quite excited thinking about it. I just finished the three hour long presentation by Tesla on battery day and their shareholders meeting. Uh, now, I've labeled this, be, um, this video, um, uh, I guess, a battery day summary from a non-engineer's point of view. And this is where I disclose the fact that I'm actually not an engineer, not a software engineer. I'm not IT. I'm just not technical in any way. I'm not an electrician. I, I don't know anything too much about uh, these kind of things, which is why I've always sort of framed my YouTube channel from the point of coming from a, I guess, a layperson or just a common consumer who's conscientious about energy and conservation and all those kind of things. So I guess this is where I'm coming to you from, from I'm actually a healthcare worker. So a non-engineer, healthcare worker, uh, energy conscious um, person who is interested in Tesla because they seem to be the only company looking at uh, energy and vehicular transport uh, from a whole, you know, sort of holistic per perspective, not just from a one, one point of the production chain. And, and I guess before battery day, I was kind of, naively thinking was only just about the battery itself and thinking wow you know they're going to bring out this amazing new battery that's going to blow everyone out of the water and to some extent they did they did talk about the actual cell itself but it was so much more than that and i, I was completely completely amazed and and just completely wowed um by what was actually presented today and it was actually a whole the whole story and i can see now why tesla actually integrated battery day with the shareholders meeting the two are really important because it it, it shows what tesla are doing and how important uh, the business model is as well and how how structurally important the battery is to the whole operation that tesla is trying to do now of course you know if you want the technical side of things by all means please watch the video itself it's three hours long it's been seen by i think one point whatever million people already uh, on youtube uh, if you want all those details, it's all there for you. I'm sure there are other YouTube channels as well, much more technical than I am. But if you just want an overview of, overview of what's what was said in the Battery Day shareholders meeting, then I guess I hopefully will try to bring that across to you today. So quick recap of Battery Day shareholders meeting. I think I presume it was is held um, in in California, um, uh, and it was you know for socially distanced. They had all the cars in the parking lot with you know, people who were luckily invited. Uh, to, to that event um, and people stayed in their cars on the whole. Uh, there was a massive stage with a screen, Elon Musk was present. Um, they went through some general business to begin with and there was an introduction by Robin Denhall, our uh, Australian um, CEO for Tesla. Um, and then uh, Elon Musk came on stage and gave a you know rundown of what's been happening this year despite all the challenges. They've made four uh, profitable quarters, uh, which was fantastic. And it was really good to see um, you know the fans and the shareholders in their cars honking away uh, at, a, at their approval. So you know it was really quite well done. And you could see Elon at first say, "How do I read the room?" But very quickly you could see that he was reading the room because every time they honked, he reacted uh, very positively. So it was really great to see. And then the main show started, and then the battery day, uh, you know, uh, presentation began. And I guess overall, um, what the take-home message and the too long didn't read kind of message that came through was that with all these things they want to implement over the next few years, we're looking at basically, um, you know, production of their vehicles and their and their mission to allow a car that's going to be it's going to have a battery that's going to be five times. Uh, more dense or more efficient, uh, allowing for six times more power and also a, an overall increase in range of their vehicles by 16%. Uh, and, and of course, at this point when I was watching the presentation, when they put that slide up, I was thinking, okay, you know, they're going to present this wonderful new magical battery that's going to blow the share, the stock price out of the water, it's going to blow you know, the fan out of the water, uh, it's going to amaze myself and, uh, and others watching this. But it became much more than that, it was an overall picture. I mean, Elon started off by, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the gentleman who was with him. I assume he was one of the lead engineers. Um, and they were discussing about how the problem currently, and this is why, this is where I like watching Elon and watching Tesla and, uh, I, 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 uh, on, on stage, because they always, they always present a problem. Like, what is the current problem, uh, you know, uh, you know with, with the world right now? And, and I guess over the years, I've seen Tesla's mission. Um, you know, when I first started following them, following them the problem was, of course, you know, the climate change problem um, and the fact that we were burning too many fossil fuels. Uh, we needed to find an alternative en en energy source. 
And of course, this problem is now transcribed. Now that Tesla is, has proven themselves to be profitable, sustainable, it's business, the problem now becomes how do we scale? How do we scale battery production? Because at the core of Tesla's energy business is the battery. You know, if you want to be able to store renewable energy, you need a decent battery. So the battery is at the core of their business and you need a battery and it, in its current state, you know, I, I guess without going too technical, the problem is that there's, it's, it's not going to work because you would need a lifetime to produce enough, you know, a battery in its current state to power the whole earth and all the, the vehicles and all the businesses that are involved needing that battery. So I guess the problem now is that you need a better battery. You need a battery that's denser, more efficient, more powerful, better range, all that kind of thing. And I guess today we saw a 50% uh, percent reduction in the cost of the battery. Um, and also, you know, like I said before, five times more power, six times, 16% uh, increased range, all those kind of things. And it wasn't just the battery, the magic battery that Elon started talking about. You know, Tesla is, is a holistic thing. It's 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 to do with the production of the battery as well. So let's start with the battery. So the, he started talking about how the current battery, and of course, this as a little aside, he was saying, why is it called 18650 from the old Model S X batteries now 2170? I think they just dropped the zero from the 18650. So now it's called 18.65 to 21.70. I think the new one's going to be called 46 something or rather. It's, it's to do with the length and the width of the cell. But essentially, without going too technically again, I think the, 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 the solution now is to try to get uh, essentially a better way of getting the lithium ions in the cell from the anode to the cathode, from the negative to the positive terminal and a better way of doing it. I think even he said it's it's a proprietary obviously, but and I, I certainly didn't understand all of it, but essentially it's a more efficient way of doing it. And then for each step of the way, he would say, okay, this accumulates to a 15 or whatever, 20% better you know, battery. And then the next thing you talk about is of course, uh, things like better manufacturing, and of course, you know, better production of the cell itself. Um, and then the better assembly. So there's a, there'll be a better assembly line, uh, you know, to try and try minimize stoppages increase the efficiency of a factory he's saying that tesla's factories are actually uh, some of the most efficient factories in the world now um it's still a very small number i must say like we're not talking anywhere near 100 percent efficiency um, i guess no machine is 100 percent efficient but you know now you know we're saying they're saying that look tesla is now way ahead of the game we've got some of the most in fact probably the most efficient factory in the world and then he started talking about the factories the fact that he wants to build a factory on every single continent let me say that again. He wants to build a factory on every single continent. So currently he's got one in China, obviously with uh, Shanghai, one in, in uh, USA, obviously Fremont, and there's gonna be one in the works with Texas. Uh, and then there's gonna be one being built in Berlin. So that's Europe covered. Where's the one in Australia? I mean, Australia is technically a continent. So that got me a little bit excited and I'm sure a lot of Australian fans were excited as well hearing that. Where will this factory be built? Amazing, right? So one in every continent, of course, that will increase the efficiency of production as well because you don't have to ship every single car from Vermont or Berlin to around the world. If you've got one in every continent, obviously it's a, it's easy to ship. Again, that lends itself to a more efficient process, a more efficient battery that drives down the cost. So like I said, not always just the battery itself that's doing it. It's to do with the whole manufacturing, production, assembly, shipping process. So that's factory wise. The next thing that, that uh, was interesting to hear as well, uh, after hearing about uh, a better factory for, for shipping it out. Uh, as I've mentioned assembly, um, I've, I've mentioned uh, you know, the actual cell itself and the manufacturing process. Then he talked about the, the raw materials itself. And he said that lithium is abundant. There's so much lithium in the world. So that made me feel a bit better as well, because you know, obviously people ask me all the time, like what, lithium, you're mining lithium. You know, I'm gonna run out of lithium, it's, it's not sustainable. He was kind of basically saying there's enough lithium iron in the US to basically, you know, power all of the USA, I think, you know, change the fleet over to, to electric, something like that. And and I think Australia's got one of the highest uh, concentrations of lithium as well in our in our rare earth. So, uh, and and then he went on to say that you know lithium, the way you mine lithium is actually quite simple. It doesn't destroy the surrounding environment the same way you might mine coal or something else. That's also reassuring. The other you know other compounds that you need as well other elements like silicon silicon is required for battery production and silicon again is obviously abundant it's the it's the second most abundant element in the world after oxygen of course that's also reassuring as well knowing that that he said that um, and then he talked a bit about nickel nickel and cobalt um, so nickel is something they're trying to transition towards uh, because you know it's, it's an efficient uh, efficient element to have in a battery 
Um, also better in terms of, I guess, I guess child, child labor things that are sort of surrounding cobalt. Uh, it doesn't require child labor as much as cobalt does. So I think he was trending towards a battery with zero cobalt. Uh, and of course, cobalt is used because it's a stable compound or safe, stable element for the um, structure of a battery. Um, you know, it's, it's, I guess you use the analogy of a bookshelf. If you've got cobalt in the, in the co, in the cathode, um, then you've got a stable battery. I think nickel is also quite stable. And he was also saying that um, they've, they're starting to produce uh, their own, you know, alloy for the, uh, for the actual car itself. And this is where he segue to the fact that, you know, the, the battery one day, the battery pack in our cars, which currently aren't structural, you know, you need structural elements and fillers to, to, to sit the battery in, in the car itself. Uh, the battery one day will become structural to the vehicle. So again, that lends itself to a better, you know, better, better design of the car, more efficient car. Um, and he's sort of akin that to, um, you know, a fuel, fuel in an aircraft. So in an aircraft, I didn't realize this until I watched the presentation that the wing of an aircraft actually holds uh, the fuel required to power that aircraft. Again, that lends to the efficiency of the aircraft. The same way a battery that will be structural one day will lend to an increased efficiency of a future vehicle. And this of course segues to a new vehicle that he had under wraps, literally. There was a picture of a car uh, in, you know, in, when he was talking about the different types of uh, elements required for, you know, horses for courses, basically, like, you know, um, uh, you will have uh, for Cybertruck um, and for the, um, for the semi, a semi, you will, you will have a more nickel based, uh, you know, battery versus I guess the lower end where you've got the, uh, this new vehicle um, and then Model 3, Model Y, um, that's going to be sort of more iron based uh, compound element um, in its battery formation. So this car was literally under wraps uh, as a graphic on the screen. And then he sort of surprised everyone saying that, well, by the end of hopefully 2022, 23, we'll have a $25,000 US dollar vehicle, electric vehicle. So he admitted the fact that, yes, you know, electric cars are still expensive, but to have a $25,000 US dollar electric car, that's, you know, just a rough um, napkin calculation. If we can get a vehicle that's 35,000 Australian dollars, maybe 40,000 once you include, you know, our typical Australia tax and all that kind of thing, uh, so a thirty-five to forty thousand uh, dollar car, you know, that suddenly becomes the cheapest electric car on the Australian market. If you talk about today's terms, if you can have a car that's that cheap, I think it becomes very compelling. As I've always said, uh, electric cars, you know, it's it's still better to buy an electric car, even if it's ten thousand dollars over budget than what you were prepared to pay for an equivalent ICE car. Let's say a Camry, high-end Camry, is at like thirty thousand dollars, right? compared to say this Model 2, let's call it a Model 2, that's got the cheap electric car that's coming out, that's say gonna be $40,000. You know, if you do the maths, I think any smart person will go for this Model 2 over a Camry because you save that much money in petrol, maintenance, etc. over the course of say five, six years that you own this vehicle. And of course, you know, it's powered by renewable energy potentially. So, you know, there's so many benefits to buying a car like that. So on that end of the scale, that's fantastic to know that we, you know, if he wants to scale up battery production so we can produce a much more mass market vehicle than the Model 3 having this Model 2 that's potentially 25,000 US. And then he surprised everyone once again. Well, I guess not surprised. I guess people in the know would, would know that he probably was going to bring this out. But the Plaid Model S, Plaid being, you know, a reference to Spaceballs. This is the, the Plaid, I guess, I've got my, on my shirt here. Plaid, um, you know, this Model S with this incredible range of... 840 kilometers, um, you know, 500 odd miles. Um, it hasn't been tested by the EPA or anything yet, but you know, it's an estimate range of 840 kilometers, which blows anything out of the water currently for a production electric vehicle. So 840 kilometers plus uh, for a top end Plaid Model S, which can be ordered already right now. So you can go to the Australian Tesla website and you put, you spec out this Model S with full self-driving, top line wheels, um, all those kind of things. You end up seeing a car that's 260,000 Australian dollars with a range of 840 kilometers and a zero to hundred time of, I think under two seconds. Well, that's what I saw on the screen anyway. But that is an incredible vehicle. Like just think about this for a second. You can't even get a Porsche Taycan uh, for that money. And this, this will just kill that Porsche Taycan on any race. So, you know, 840 kilometers, if you think about it, Sydney to Melbourne is about eight to 900 kilometers. So you could potentially stop halfway at say Albury or even Wagga, not Wagga, 
what's halfway Sc say Gunda guy quick top up go to the toilet for like you know uh, have a quick drink whatever 15 10 10 15 minutes back on the road after a quick charge if there's a v3 supercharger there one day boom like that is a phenomenal range so that really really takes uh, the problem out of you know slow charging all that stuff that people bring up against electric cars so so that's the Plaid Model S I guess that brings me to thinking well you know I mean 260k is a lot of money but I think it starts about 180k you know a Model Y versus a Plaid Model S you know do I make that extra Tesla stretch to get that car I, mean, I know I will never need that much range but man oh man like that is an incredible car what 100 840 kilometers um, with an incredible acceleration um, I guess something to think, think about in the next year or so whether to push for that Model S from my point of view or just go for a Model Y like anyway leave your thoughts in the comments below all right guys well that that's um, basically my little take-home message from battery day and shareholder day and why it was all integrated why it needed to be part of shareholders day you know I saw the share price drop a little bit after this production I just I think I think you need someone with a longer term vision than thinking, okay, where's that magic battery cell? Like, how come he didn't talk about, how come it wasn't that magical? It's just like, it's boring stuff. It's just, in, you know, increasing efficiency by better production, better manufacturing, assembly, you know, in, tightening things up. This, this is how you make a sustainable business model by doing all these things. Uh, and that all adds up to a, a more efficient, cheaper battery, which is at the core of a, uh, of a company like Tesla, uh, talking about sustainable energy. So. To me now it makes sense like you know i like i said i was worried i was i came to the presentation thinking okay where's this where's this fantastic magical cell but it wasn't it, it makes a lot more sense in my mind now that it's it's the holistic picture it's the overall picture you've got to you've got to consider all aspects of battery production manufacture and then vehicle production at the end of the day even even down to things like casting um for the for the new model 2 i assume and also now model y we've talked about that before with sandy monroe um but you know like they've, they've even gone to as far as producing their own alloy so it's more efficient with casting uh, so it's one piece for the vehicle and it's more efficient to produce overall so you know all these things make make me happy as a tesla shareholder knowing that all these things are covered it's not just one aspect that they're pushing it's the entire aspect of the whole manufacturing production process for tesla vehicles so congratulations tesla well done great production great presentation like and obviously, you know, thinking about social distancing, we're in a pandemic at the moment, but also thinking about the overall picture um, uh, with the actual presentation itself. So well done, Elon Musk, uh, a very enjoyable presentation. Uh, I didn't actually see it live today. I was at work, unfortunately, but I, I managed to uh, watch the whole thing. Uh, and this hopefully gives you an idea of what it's like um, as a layperson with no engineering background, no IT background to understand uh, what Tesla are trying to do in this space, in this uh, renewable energy and electric vehicle space. Alright guys, thanks for watching and this is the point where I will plug my channel. Thanks for watching. You know, if you liked the video, please give a like if you enjoyed it. Um, please leave a comment below if you, if you want to add something that I missed uh, from, from this point of view. If you want to add something technical, please by, by all means do that. I want to learn something as well. Uh, if something I didn't explain correctly to, please I'm happy to be corrected uh, for my benefit and also for, my, for our viewers as well. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I've got a ton of videos about autopilot, about charging, about... I try to cover most aspects of, um, you know, owning a Tesla. I've got a Tesla Model 3 and a Model S. Uh, so, yeah, please subscribe. You'll get more content, hopefully, um, with time. You'll be notified. And, uh, of course, helps my channel grow as well. All right, guys, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Hope you enjoyed Battery Day as much as I did. And until next time, happy charging.